Welcome back everybody, I'm Nick930, and this past week, EA invited me out to their offices near San Francisco to play an early build of the upcoming first-person magic shooter game Immortals of Avium. And today, I want to share a bit about my experience with the game, including what it is, how it plays, how it performs, and what I think could be improved. Now, this is not actually the first time that I've been given a chance to try out this game. I've actually known about this title for the past several months now, and I've been participating in a special playtesting opportunity, where I've consulted on the game's early development and provided feedback on various aspects of the gameplay, design, and marketing. It's been an eye-opening experience so far, getting a chance to see a game in its earliest state as it steadily evolves moving closer to its launch. And with this latest in-person event, I can finally share some of my thoughts on this game and give you all a better idea of what exactly Immortals is. But before we get started, I'd like to thank both Ascendant Studios and Electronic Arts for this opportunity. And while this is not a directly sponsored preview, I do want to disclose that they did pay for my flight and hotel room so that I could attend the event. Alright, so let's kick this preview off by first talking about what exactly this game is. Immortals of Avium is a brand new, magic-based first-person shooter game, created by the newly formed Ascendant Studios at Electronic Arts. The studio was founded back in 2018 by Brett Robbins, the creative director for the original Dead Space, along with several of the Sledgehammer-developed Call of Duty games, and has since grown significantly, with over 100 veteran developers from across the industry, all contributing to making strong AAA single-player experiences. Their first project, which has basically been in development since around the time that the studio was formed, is said to be heavily inspired by the likes of classic magic shooter games from the 90s, including Hexen and Heretic. Only, instead of being maze-like Doom clones, Immortals is adopting a more modern approach, with an emphasis on epic battles, cinematic storytelling, and action RPG mechanics. The game takes place in a fantasy world called Avium, where a millennia-long conflict called the Everwar pits rival realms against each other in an eternal struggle over control of magic. The player assumes the role of Jack, a young, sarcastic street punk who is recruited into a special order of magic warriors after demonstrating an unusually strong affinity for magic. That's pretty much as simple as I can break it down to, as the game's lore is surprisingly extensive for a brand new IP with dozens of unique characters, some solid voice casting, and plenty more additional world details to explore by means of collectible notes and automated journal entries. The world itself has a very unique style to it, combining the more fantastical elements of things like Lord of the Rings, with a sort of futuristic alien vibe like something out of the latest Marvel films. But instead of guns, swords, and arrows, everything about this world revolves around the use of colorful magic spells, cast by hand using intricate sigils mounted on the user's wrist. Typically, this kind of thing wouldn't be my cup of tea, as I'm not all too big into these wilder fantasy settings. Though, it's interesting how things like the dialogue are reeling in slightly to not be too overwhelming, often sprinkling in more modern-style jokes with the dialogue to keep things light. Whether or not this will actually work is difficult to say with the limited time that I had with the game, though it is worth mentioning as I feel it will factor a great deal into the game's story and the overall likability of its characters. What I did get a good sense of, though, was how the game actually plays. For this preview event, I played through about three different stretches of the campaign, each chosen to demonstrate various aspects of the game, including the opening tutorial area, a more cinematic battle sequence to play around with the combat, and a later game section to showcase how all the various systems work together. As I mentioned previously, Immortals is a first-person shooter, and therefore handles about as you'd expect. You can run, jump, melee, and shoot at groups of AI-controlled enemies. Though, in lieu of a gun, players instead shoot magic from an ornate sigil, the color of which dictates the type of spell being cast. Blue sigils, for example, are designed around precision, dishing out a lot of damage at long range with a medium to low rate of fire. Red sigils, on the other hand, function more like a shotgun or grenade launcher, dealing heavy damage at close to medium range with a wider spread. And the green sigils are built around speed, with full auto or rapid bursts being used to help clear space and 
drain the health of several targets more quickly. Because Jack is a unique type of spellcaster known as a Triarch Magnus, he can harness the power of all three of these magic forms, which can be easily swapped between with the tap of a button. In addition to these three primary colors, the design of the sigil itself can also influence how the player's projectiles behave. The blue strike bolt, for example, can be swapped out for the breakshot arc light that has a lower capacity but fires much more powerful energy blasts. The shotgun like breach fire can similarly be swapped out for the burst fire, which shoots out explosive blasts instead. And the rapid fire storm shards can be swapped with the seeker shards that have a lower capacity but deal more damage and can track enemies slightly. And these aren't the only sigils to swap between either. Each magic type has several different sigils to choose between, effectively transforming magic spells into a full arsenal of weapons on par with any other typical shooter game, only with the creative flexibility of being in a fantasy environment. To encourage players to swap between these colors, enemies are also color-coded to coincide with the player's weapons too, with red enemies being more susceptible to red attacks, blue enemies more susceptible to blue, and so on. By doing this, players will find themselves constantly mixing and matching colors in the heat of combat. It's not necessarily required, as non-matching spells will still deal a decent amount of damage on their own. Though in the later stages, this mechanic, known as shred damage, will become increasingly more important, and a helpful tool for players on the harder difficulties. In addition to these primary attacks, Immortals also mixes things up further with a wide range of helpful tools and secondary attacks, known as augments, totems, controls, and fury spells. So first up, we have the shield. Mastering the shield is a big part of Immortals, and a necessity for some of the more challenging enemies and boss battles. By default, the shield is in a toggle-on, toggle-off configuration, and will absorb most enemy projectiles until its power is drained. While active, the player can fire any of their strike spells as usual, though general movement is restricted slightly until it's put away. Then there's the Animate Augment, that isn't so much a combat ability as it seems to only be used for a few scripted instances in the exploration phases, where players can directly manipulate certain objects with a green glyph, bending them into position and using the warped object to cross a large gap. In addition to these two augments, we have totems and controls. These are sort of magical tools too, Though unlike the augments, these can be improved further throughout the game by finding new gear and spending gold on upgrades. They also have to be equipped to be used, and can be swapped between using the d-pad on the controller. First, there's the Lash. With Lash, you can use a sort of magical blue whip to pull in weaker enemies close. The green limpets, on the other hand, can be used to slow down both enemies and certain environmental objects and the Disrupt Control can be used to stun enemies, and can even trigger an explosion if shot at enemies in the midst of them casting a spell. Finally, we have Fury Spells. These are special power attacks that can help significantly in more challenging battles. These include a powerful Shatter attack that shoots a wave of rocks out of the ground to break enemy defenses, the Red Blast Wave that creates a shock wave around the player to free up space, and the green torrent that sends out multiple guided projectiles at any nearby enemies. To help balance these more powerful attacks, Fury spells consume mana, located in the bottom right of the screen, that can be refilled using any found mana crystals, either dropped by enemies or found throughout the environment. If the player is faced with an unusually difficult confrontation, then they may need to resort to a powerful special attack initiated by pressing both joysticks down together, which will combine all three magic types at once, sending out a beam of unstoppable energy that can melt through most enemies. Together, the combat feels very intuitive, but still deep and robust, with lots of creative options to take advantage of in any situation. The general feedback from spell impacts with enemies also feels really good now, thanks to the inclusion of a new sound effect that plays whenever an enemy is defeated, a small but considerable improvement from the earlier versions that I tested that makes the combat feel much more satisfying. That being said, there's definitely still room for improvement here, 
For one, I think the enemy colors used to dictate what color spell the player should be using against them could be made a little bit more obvious. As right now, it's usually just limited to a subtle glow from the helmet, or a recent magic attack that they've sent out. More critically though, I wish there was an easier way to swap between the three different colors on the controller, instead of needing to toggle between them all. On keyboard and mouse, this is not a problem, as the strike attacks are bound to their own keys. But a simple three-pronged radial dial that players can flip through might help here, especially since pressing and holding the weapon swap button doesn't appear to be bound to anything at the moment. Though Immortals isn't all just magical combat and epic fantasy war zones, the game also seems to lean heavily into its exploration aspects as well, with the more focused combat-driven levels being paced out occasionally by some basic platforming and puzzle solving. The platforming typically involves double jumping or performing a magic hover between moving objects. Though occasionally, these are combined with more intricate moves like needing to use magical dodges and strikes to open paths and cross obstacles. Some doorways are blocked by a series of magical stones that need to be located and shot with the correct color to activate. Other paths need to be manipulated using the animate augmentation requiring players to cross before the large object shifts back into place. It's all pretty boilerplate single-player adventure game style material, mixing in some narrative beats in combat arenas with some exploration to help break up the monotony of the pacing. Though its unique fantasy setting and variety should help set it apart in some instances, and I'm curious what other magical abilities will be made available to help mix things up further. Immortals also features a decently robust set of player progression and upgrade systems as well, leaning into popular leveled gear systems and skill trees to let players customize their builds to suit their playstyle. Each enemy defeated, or objective completed, will earn the player XP, or Arcanum. If enough Arcanum is earned, then the player will achieve an Ascension that can be used at any time in the skill tree or talent screen to permanently improve the capabilities of their three magic types. Players can also find permanent health and mana upgrades with Radiant Stones, often stowed away in hard-to-reach chests or given as a reward for defeating a powerful enemy. Most of the time, though, players will find gold spread out throughout the world of Avium, which along with found Colored Essence, can be spent at forges to upgrade their arsenal. Players can purchase new sigils for different attack types, upgrade their current sigils, totems, and other gear, or equip various miscellaneous items like rings and bracers that provide additional passive benefits. There's a lot to mess around with here, with near-endless combinations of different attack styles, upgrades, and talents. Though it's not necessarily overwhelming either, ensuring players can comfortably keep track of their player progression and proceed with the action as soon as possible. Overall, Immortals gameplay is both familiar and unique at the same time. A lot of these gameplay systems we've seen used time and time again now, with the same kind of looting and upgrade flow driving the action. Though I do feel Immortals' unique setting, its militaristic fantasy theme, and its environmental variety are important factors that may benefit the game throughout the course of its estimated 20-hour runtime. Next, I want to touch lightly on the game's technical design, mainly its visuals and performance. According to Ascendant Studios, Immortals has been made using the more recent Unreal Engine 5, and makes use of its unique nanite virtualized geometry to assist in rendering the worlds of Avium. You do get a real sense of this technology at play in some of these larger overlooks, usually off to the side of the main path. Though the game itself isn't necessarily the most visually stunning sample of Unreal Engine 5 either, the character models are still nestled firmly on the other side of the uncanny valley, with its higher quality rendered cinematics feeling disconnected from the playable gameplay sequences that are far more stiff by comparison. And the lighting, while supposedly dynamic thanks to the use of Lumen, still appears as though it's baked into these worlds. Though I do appreciate some of the nice visual effects that have been incorporated to help each area stand out, with some nice light rays, bloom, and even some cool caustic effects to accompany these large strands of magic that you'll occasionally encounter throughout each level. Water simulation effects also look pretty good, though I would have liked to see some better fire simulation, especially considering how often fire-like effects are used on screen. 
The real visual standout for Immortals, though, is its particle density. There's a lot on screen at any given time, especially during combat. And when everything's working right, Immortals can be a real visual treat. A confusing and sometimes overwhelming one, but a treat nonetheless. My only real concern here is that Immortals does seem to struggle with performance in this particular build. With this presentation, the game was captured playing at a 4K resolution with its graphic settings set up to its Ultra preset. I'm not sure if any sort of dynamic scaling options were enabled, though this game could certainly benefit from that, as the performance dipped hard, especially in the demo's Pale Forest section. There were times where the game felt like it was dropping to the mid-30 FPS range, despite holding a pretty solid high frame rate in the early parts of the session. At one point, my computer even managed to overheat and shut down, while many others had their game freeze up and crash too. This was definitely unexpected, as the many builds I tested before this event actually ran really well locally on my own machine. So this likely has more to do with the poor cooling in the event space for the machines themselves. And once I passed a certain point, I didn't run into any more issues. Still, this is certainly something to keep an eye out for, especially after the many recent performance-related issues we've seen with PC releases this year. Other than that though, Immortals looked and played great. I didn't really run into any bugs or visual glitches that I can remember. There's certainly a few design aspects that I mentioned earlier that might make the game play a little bit better if they are dressed. But otherwise, I think the game is really shaping out to be a fun, albeit familiar, action RPG experience, and certainly one to watch as we get closer to its summer release. But what do you guys think? Are you interested in Immortals of Avium? If so, what are you most excited to see more of? Let me know in the comments section. Also, I'd like to thank EA once again for flying me out to this event to try the game out. If you want to learn more about Immortals, be sure to stay tuned here for a final review closer to release. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this posted every week.